Azure function has become a go-to serverless solution for many developers, allowing you to focus on your code while Azure handles the infrastructure. One of the key concerns when deploying any API is security. An easiest and powerful authentication mechanism available in Azure ecosystem is Azure AD authentication, now called Microsoft Entra IT. This is super simple and can be enabled without writing a single line of code. It lets you avoid managing complex secrets. It seamlessly integrates with other Microsoft services. You can implement role-based access controls through Azure Portal. This plug-and-play approach to security means you can focus on building your function's business logic rather than worrying about authentication mechanism. In an enterprise integration world, we might need to expose the secure functions as APIs through API management. In today's video, we will see how to set up an Azure function with proper Entra ID authentication. Register a client application in Entra ID with the right permissions and we will see how we can use the client application to access the API. Configure Azure API management to securely communicate with your protected function. Test the entire flow to ensure everything works. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a Microsoft MVP and I do blogging and make YouTube videos on .NET and Azure. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Let's get started now. I'm in my Azure portal. I have a simple function app, in fact, a function app, a sample function we have here. If you simply hit the sample function, it's a Git operation and you can see it's working all okay. It's an anonymous authentication, like there is no authentication in place at the moment. Now let's enable Microsoft Entra ID authentication for this function app. To enable Microsoft Entra ID authentication for this function app, under settings, go to authentication. So you can configure identity provider here. Identity provider is, is a centralized place where user identities will be managed. Usernames, password, identities, claims and everything will be managed. Add identity provider. In this case, to enable Microsoft Entra ID, we will choose Microsoft and you can leave everything to the default. So this will do an app registry inside Microsoft Entra ID and we can configure the app registry to use the client credential flow here. In our case, since we are using Azure function, which is a REST API, we can configure the client credential flow using the registered function app. We will see all of that. Um, then select client expiration time to 90 days and we can leave everything to the default for now and we can go next permissions we will leave this one to the default and click on add okay now we have the microsoft entra id authentication enabled for this function app you can go to the function app application that has been registered in the microsoft entra id so there are a couple of things that we need to configure here. First, let's simply create a secret. There is a secret already, but I don't have access to the secret. Let's create a secret and secret has been created. Let's safely save this secret somewhere. Okay, the secret has been saved. Now go to the expose API. Okay, this has been exposed as an API, like the scope has been defined by using the function app client ID. Now, let's try to access the function app using the client credential flow. So before we try that, let's go to our function app and let's access this sample function and see. It is redirecting the user to um, authentication flow. We'll leave it here. Now it's secured. Um, but for now, since it is a REST API, we will try to access it using the client credential flow by using the application that is registered as part of enabling Microsoft Entra ID for the function app, right? So to access this function using the client credential flow, um, we have a defined scope already here under Expose API. This is our scope. So and another thing we need is the client ID. Just copy this client ID. Now let's go to our postman so we are in my postman we are using the client credential flow to access the function app so for that we will be using the client id of the 
application that was registered in microsoft enter id and this is the client secret that got generated and here is where we define the scope um, of the application and here um, is a token in point where you request for a token you just prepare this client credential flow request and hit send you should be able to access an access token just copy this access token then using this access token as a bearer token we should be able to invoke our function app okay our function app has been invoked using this token successfully just to prove the point if i simply you know remove the bearer token see what happens just remove that and hit send you don't have permission to view this directory or page so we have microsoft entra id client credential flow working all okay for our azure function app now let's say we have multiple clients who wants to access our function app and we want to manage these clients separately and each client have a different set of permissions and based on the permission we will decide what the client can access to achieve this for each client we can register one application within microsoft enter id and give this client application permission on the function app through app registry and give the necessary claims now we will give this app client id and client secret to that specific client they can use those client id and client secret and use the client credential flow to access our function app and within the function app we will get the scope claim and everything as part of their identity and based on the scope claim and permissions we can decide what they can do and what they can't do so let's see how we can achieve this one for demo purpose i will be simply creating one client application and i will be granting that client application access on the actual function app application and provide the necessary permissions then we will try to access the function app using the clients client id and client secret let's do that now in the azure portal go to microsoft enter id app registrations new app registration let's name this one as simply client and we can pretty much leave everything to the default and click on register as a first step let's create the client secret create the client secret and you have the client secret just make sure you copy it because you won't be able to access it later now let's give this client application access on our actual function app app registry we can do that via api permissions go to the api permissions so for this one just grant the admin consent the default read permissions just do that then add permissions go to my apis you should be able to see the function app application here so we are not seeing it since there is no owner assigned on this function app let's go to this one and just simply add a owner so the owner will be able to see it um it will be me so we have added the owner now let's go to our client function app and see just do a refresh and let's see if we can add it now add api permissions my api yes we can see in fact i have an app now because i'm the owner i should be able to give the permissions right so if you don't see it here just make sure you are the owner of the app otherwise you won't be able to see it here click on that okay we don't want to do delegated permission because this is as a signed in user we want to do the client credential flow to do the client credential flow we need application permissions but the application permission is disabled because there are no roles defined for our function app application yet that's why this is disabled okay let's go here and define some of the roles for this function app so this is the actual application of the function app then let's create a simple role um reader function dot reader so for the copy paste purpose i'm just doing you know um copy the same and uh, paste so for now you can just do um applications apply you can do another role as well maybe you know writer application this will be writer writer and apply so now this function has two roles defined reader and writer um now let's go to our client application and see if we can assign the roles using the client credential flow 
my API. Yep, this is an um, actual function app. Yes, we can see the application permissions now. Since we added C, we are able to see the two roles that are defined inside this function. Okay, for this client, we are giving access on the function app application with a reader access and add permissions. Do the grant admin consent. Yeah, admin consent is granted. Okay, now all looking good. And there is one more thing which we have to do. If we go to our function app, same um, authentication function app. If you edit the identity provider, there are certain settings here, right? Just, just scroll down here. So we said client application requirements allow requests only from this application itself, meaning that this application is function app. So this is what we tried previously. We tried, okay, only through this function app application, we were able to access it. But now that we have created a client application, we also want to access from the client application what we have to do is allow request from the specific client application. You can add multiple client applications here, but for now we will be adding only one. If you see here, there is already a selected client application, which is function app itself has been selected by default. So edit that and add our client application client ID. This is our client application client ID. Just to cross check, 33 ends with B0, 33 ends with B0 and click ok so with that we have set up everything now the client application should be able to access the function app using the client credential flow and as part of the token and everything it should be giving us the roles and everything and based on the roles within your function app code you will be able to decide what the client can do and can't do right so let's try to access that so client id client secret you just get that Okay, in the postman, now we are using the client credential flow using the client application, client ID and secret. This is the client ID of the client application and this is the client secret of the client application and grant type is client credential and the scope, the scope that we are trying to access here is the function app application, the actual function app like a master application slash default, that is the scope and you hit this in, you should be able to get the access token grab the access token go to the actual function app call now in the barrel token just remove this and hit send yep you don't have permission paste the access token welcome to azure functions now we are able to access using the client application now to check something here you can go to the online jwt decoders you simply paste your token and you can see we are getting the roles as part of the token which is function dot reader meaning that within the function app backend code you will be able to receive the roles and based on the function dot reader role assigned for that client you can decide what the client can access and what he can't access now this is all looking good now we will see how we can friend this one using azure api management in our day-to-day -day enterprise integration world we might need to expose the secure functions as apis through azure api management so let's see how we can configure how we can friend azure api management in front of this function app i have already created in fact to iphone api api management here we will simply add our function app we will configure our function app here to configure our function app simply let's do it via portal function app and we can browse and select our function app uh, in fact to function app select and sample operation select we can leave everything to the default and create this will by default create two operations get post but we just want get now let's quickly make a simple request for this get call and see what happens okay it's 401 unauthorized you do not have permissions to view this directory or page now let's get access token and see if we can use the access token okay this access token is still seems to be valid simply to a control c and pass the access token as part of the headers it will be authorization header then paste the bearer token and click send this time it is 200 and welcome to azure function so this is another way and on top of it obviously we can secure this 
API management endpoint with other authentication mechanisms. That is it for this video. I hope you like the content. If you like the content, please hit subscribe and share it. I will catch you in the next video. Until then, this is Shri signing off. Thank you.